We are starting transition metal chemistry. Very interesting and beautiful area. In this show, I'll just first we'll look at 3D transition metals. All these elements have electron configuration of 4s2, 3dn, starting from scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. Now, scandium has no d electrons in its compounds. And uh, the same to some extent is true for zinc. So in more narrow case, uh, people say the transition will be from titanium to copper. All these elements are metals. That's why transition metals and transition elements means exactly the same. So, first we'll look carefully at 3D transition metals and then very briefly we'll make overlook of 4D and 5D. So, to start with electron configuration again always has 4S electrons for atom and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 10 d electrons. Size of atom goes down as usual with number of group. So, scandium is the largest and uh, nickel is the smallest. Copper is slightly higher and then uh, it comes back with zinc. Reduction potential. How easy is to make metal out of iron? It's going down from scandium to copper, almost systematically down. Scandium and titanium are strong reducing agents. Metal, copper is very weak reducing agent. Now zinc is back to very low reduction potential. Mounting point is first going up, then slowly coming down. Density is systematically increasing in this area. Why? Because size is going down, at atoms are smaller, and atomic weight, of course, is going up. The same trend is with electric conductivity. It increases from titanium to vanadium to chromium, iron, and copper has almost as high conductivity as the best conductor, silver. The main difference from what we have seen before is presence of d orbitals. d orbitals, 3d orbitals are shown here have two sorts of shape. XY, YZ, XZ have very similar shape. X square minus Y square and Z square are standalone. Again, there are five of them and they play major role in chemistry of 3D transition metals. They play practically no role in main group elements. P 
B-block and S-block elements do not have electrons in 3D valence shell. Here we have electrons in a valence shell. So that's what we'll be looking at. Now, oxidation numbers. Uh, for first groups, highest oxidation number coincides with number of the group. Scandium has only oxidation number of three. That's why it's not very interesting. Only three plus ions, nothing else. Titanium has the most stable four, but has other. Vanadium, most stable five, but four is very stable as well, and three and two are possible. Chromium has stable oxidation number of six, but three and two are stable as well, and five and four are possible. Manganese has stable plus seven, possible six and five, stable four, and very stable two plus. Iron cannot make eight plus. The highest possible is six, uh, very stable three and two. Same is true for cobalt. Same is true for nickel. Copper has the most stable two, but one is very stable. Zinc has only stable oxidation number of two plus. To predict the highest oxidation number, you just need to look at group number with the exception of 9, 8, 10, and 11 groups. Well, with 11, the rule, you're looking at second number. Uh, you can predict that 1 is good estimate. And for zinc, group 12, which is 2 in old nomenclature, uh, 2 plus is easy prediction. What is very special with these elements, fantastically beautiful color of their compounds. Fantastic copper, blue and green, chromium, once again chromium, once again chromium, nickel compounds. All of them are very beautiful and brightly colored. It makes this air very attractive.